Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Howdy. I don't know why I said howdy. I'm not from Texas, but... Hello. Love Ryan Shirley. Fantastic channel. Um, let's... I'm unprepared. I just press... Play. Let, we're watching a travel video from Ryan Shirley, all right? My freaking back. Original link to the video. We're not restarting. Bad intro. Original link to the video from Ryan Shirley. Top of the screen, uh, channel of the description. Go check him out. I'd, I'd highly recommend it. Ah. Top 10 Greek islands to visit. Preemptive like, let's go. That was a disaster, but we're, we made it. My name is Ryan, and what's up guys? My name is Ryan, and the last hey, few Ryan. summers I spent exploring Greece and its islands, and I Look at that freaking water, how does... Why is our water green in the sea, or, or dark blue, but yours is pristine? I want to Ryan, and the last few summers I spent exploring Greece and its islands, and I want to share with you my favorites, so here's my Greek islands top 10. So beautiful. Is that chalk, guys, or, um... With over 6,000 islands and islets, it's safe to say that Greece is home to some of the world's most beautiful islands. From the unique beaches of Crete to the daunting cliffs of Zakynthos, the Greek islands are waiting to be experienced. Let's start this video off on the island of Santorini. I think of all islands in Greece, Santorini is probably the most famous. Hundreds of thousands, if not millions Looks of tourists come to this island every year volcanic. to experience iconic villages and Mediterranean scenery of the island. I came to Santorini- yeah, when I picture Greece, these are like the types of buildings and area I picture. So, yeah, it makes sense. Iconic villages and Mediterranean scenery of the island. I came to Santorini a few summers ago and it lived up to its hype. Now, to get there, you can take a ferry from Athens or you can also fly there from most European cities. Now, one of the most famous places on Santorini is the village of Oya. I mean, when you think of Santorini, this is what you probably imagine whitewashed houses, blue roofs, and just an insane backdrop. I went here early in the morning and just had the most incredible sunrise ever. I'd say if you want to come to Oya, make sure you visit as early as possible to avoid the crowds. Now, a really cool beach on San... Question, question, guys. Any geologists watching? W what is... It? The, the, the rock and dirt color is very interesting that I don't see a lot. Like right here, look at... Very interesting soil or whatever it is. And this too? Santorini is Red Beach. It's famous for its maroon colored sand and red cliffs that make you feel like you're on Mars. What's Another beach I really liked was Vlichata. It's located on the southern side of Santorini and there's just these really unique looking cliffs coupled with a narrow black sand beach. I like this area a lot because it wasn't too crowded compared to the other places. While we were here, we got on top of the cliffs and it just was an epic place to watch the sunset. After Santorini, we're What the hell is going on? Is it volcanic residue? What is it with Greece and, and a lot of like that area, Aegean Sea, Mediterranean, Adriatic, that like, on top. what, what erosion is this? What, why is this so flat? I like this area a lot because it wasn't too crowded compared to the other places. While we were here, we got on top of the cliffs and it just was an epic place to watch the sunset. After Santorini, we're going to head over to the nearby island of Milos. Now to get to Milos, you can take a ferry from Santorini or you can also make the short flight from Athens. A few years ago, Milos was relatively unknown but has been growing in popularity and with its incredible landscapes, it's easy to see why. The capital of Milos is Plaka. It's this beautiful town that's perched on a hill and overlooks the island. It's a wonderful place to just chill and watch the sunset. Now, one of my favorite places on the island is Kleftiko. The easiest way to get here is by taking a boat, but you can also hike there. They have these gorgeous white rocks, and the water is just crystal clear. When I imagine Greece, this is the landscape that I think of. I mean, such a stunning place. On your way there, you can stop at the Siki Cave and take a small boat into its cove. Now, another really cool spot on Milos is Sarikaniko Beach. It's not really a beach, rather it's a... Okay, is Greece just another planet? it
volcanic landscape made of lava that's been bleached by the sun and sea. There oh. is a little beach there and also a swimming hole that opens up to the ocean and there's also some great cliff jumping spots. No, so these cliffs, it reminds you of the cliffs of Dover color in England, are not made by the same thing. So this is bleached volcanic rock whereas that's more chocolate. Also a swimming hole that opens up to the ocean and there's also some great cliff jumping spots. Now, another thing I really loved about Milos is all its fishing villages. There's just several little idyllic villages right on the water. One of my favorites is Mandrakia. It's this tiny little village that has a harbor with colorful garages for the boats. Now, afterwards, we're gonna head over to the island of Mykonos. After Santorini, I'd Mykonos. say Mykonos is Greece's second most famous island. It's known for its vibrant nightlife and white buildings. You can reach Mykonos by ferry or plane. Now Mykonos is named the island of wind and there's some really cool windmills that you can check out. I'm assuming those don't still work. Plane. Now, Mykonos because how would they? And yeah, Mykonos just sounds so Greek. It's definitely Mykonos the first thing the I think of. of wind, and there's some really cool windmills that you can check out. Now, it's an ideal island if you want to relax during the day and party up during the night. While you're there, you can stroll the cobblestone pass or relax on one of Mykonos' many beaches, such an incredible little island. After it, we're going to visit Rhodes, located in the East Aegean Sea. I'm from Rhode Island. Not Rhodes, Rhode Island, but it's spelt the same way, R-H-O-D-E. And I think it's sort of a mystery why Rhode Island is, is called Rhode Island, but maybe it's taken from this namesake. Near Turkey, Rhodes is the fourth largest island in Greece, and it's full of beautiful landscapes and intriguing history. One of my favorite places on Rhodes is its old town. During the 14th century, the Knights of Hospitaller occupied Rhodes and converted a former Byzantine fortress into the palace of the Grand Master. It's one of the few examples of Gothic architecture in Greece. Now, one of my favorite places on the island is the town of Lindos. Gothic, Baroque, I thought I had these down. Baroque is more like fancy, and Gothic, I just think of like Gothic cathedrals that are very imposing and almost, well, Gothic. But it, it, this just seems like a castle. ...of Gothic architecture in Greece. Now, one of my favorite places on the island is the town of Lindos. So freaking its crowning beautiful. crowning feature is its Acropolis that overlooks the city. The first temple that was built here dates back to around 900 BC, and over the centuries, the Acropolis was added onto by Romans and Byzantines. Today, it stands as one of Greece's most well-preserved and popular archaeological sites. After, we're going to visit the nearby island of Simi. Now, located right above Rhodes, just a few kilometers from Turkey's coast, Simi is this ideal island and it's been nicknamed the jewel of the uh oh turkey so is this i've learned that turkey and greece don't really get along and there are a lot of islands in the aegean that you both claim Dodeca Turkey's coast. Simi is this idyllic island and it's been nicknamed the jewel Crete. of the Dodecanese island group. Now to reach Simi, there is no airport, so it can only be reached by ferry or boat. If you're staying in Rhodes, it can make a great day trip to this little island. The highlight of Simi is its harbor. It's full of colorful houses that overlook the Aegean Sea. Now aside from the harbor, the island just offers so many hidden gems and incredible beauty. Definitely worth a visit, especially if you're already on Rhodes. Afterwards, we're going to visit Crete. Now, the uniform building material and roof color and roof building really gives an extra personality to each of these each of these uh, towns slash cities. Crete is by far the largest island in Greece and the fifth largest <gasps> island. Minoans. The Mediterranean. I mean, it's huge and home to some massive mountains and phenomenal scenery. One of my favorite cities on Crete is Hanya. The history of Hanya is really interesting. During the 13th century, it was ruled by Venetians who built the fortifications that can be seen today. I love the lighthouse that overlooks a harbor. It was built in the 16th century. Crete is the fifth largest island in the Mediterranean. What's bigger than Crete? Cyprus, Sardinia, Corsica? Probably one other Greek island. Entry, and later modified by the Egyptians in the 1800s. One of the most popular beaches on Crete is Go to hell. Beach. Now to get there, it's about an hour drive from Hanya on this dirt road. And when you reach the parking lot, it's a decent hike down. Now the beach and lagoon are pretty insane. I mean, just this remote peninsula with this absolute stunning scenery. It's definitely one of the most unique and beautiful beaches in Greece. After it, we're going to head over to the island of Corfu. Now located right on the border between Greece and Albania, Corfu is one of the 
Queenie's Creek Islands, in my opinion. The island is just so lush, especially compared to the other islands in this. Is the place that piece of Greece where Sparta was is was from? You know, is, is that an island? Technically, and so maybe that's the fourth one. Video. Islands, in my opinion, the island is just so lush, especially compared to the other islands in this video. One of my favorite places on Corfu is Porto Timoni. It's this incredible horseshoe-shaped bay with beaches on both sides. It's a short hike down there, and well worth it with its amazing views. Another interesting spot on the island is Cape Drastis. It's this cliff area with these really unique-shaped sea cliffs that are worth checking out, especially during sunset. After we're gonna visit. So if you dig down in places in greece like dig a hole further inland will you reach a few feet down just this this white stone dirt stuff unique shaped sea cliffs that are worth checking out especially during sunset after we're going to visit lefkada one thing that's convenient about lefkada is that if you're already on the mainland you can drive there since there's a causeway connecting the island to the mainland now the landscape of lefkada is full of white cliffs green vegetation contrasted with the cerulean sea one of my favorite beaches on the island is milo's beach it's this long stretch of perfect white sand that's an ideal place to enjoy on a summer afternoon another really cool spot is porto Cat it's located more towards the end of the island. It's surrounded by steep cliffs. I mean, it just looks so incredible, especially during sunset. I mean, it's hard to beat the views of this Greek island. Lighthouse. Afterwards, we're going to the island that's right below Lefkada called Kefalonia. To get to Kefalonia, you can take a ferry or a flight over. Kefalonia looks a lot like Lefkada with its white cliffs and green vegetation. One of my favorite places there is the village of Asos. It's this little idyllic village full of colorful houses that's built uniquely on this peninsula as it overlooks the sea there's this is owning a boat if you live here a necessity like you need a boat to live here or you just like won't be able to get around unless by other people's boats it's a little cove that creates a phenomenal setting I mean, just such a charming creek village. It's if you're on the beaches, you can visit the famous Myrtos Beach. It's a massive 1.5 mile long white sand beach that's been voted Greece's best beach many times. Another popular place on Kefalonia is the Melisani Cave. According to legend, the a lot of the videos I watch, like these travel videos, I, I, I often point out things that like I hope the locals d don't take for granted because they seem to be pretty special and amazing. And pretty unique to your area and the thing for greece is your freaking water look at the water it's so beautiful it mile long beaches this you can visit the famous phenomenal setting i'm mean, just saying beautiful photo by the way with the how do you take photos where both the background and the flowers right in the front are relatively in focus at the same time a charming creek village. If you're more into beaches, you can visit the famous Myrtos Beach. It's a massive 1.5 mile long white sand beach that's been voted Greece's best beach many times. Another popular place on Kefalonia Cenote? is the Melisani Cave. According to legend, the cave is where the nymph Melisani was drowned after being rejected by the god Pan. Even though the legend is a little depressing, it's a beautiful underground lake with crystal clear waters. For our so are, how are these formed? My, my best guess is that as the coast is eroded away or like s certain materials become less supportive and so a sinkhole just falls down and, and like in a few many, many, many years, like a thousand years, all of this will have fallen into the ocean due to erosion and... That's my best guess as to how this stuff forms. It's just certain areas are weaker and are more exposed to the water erosion and then just sink in. The cave is where the nymph Melisani was drowned after being rejected by the god Pan. Even though the legend is a little depressing, Pan it's a labyrinth. beautiful underground lake with crystal clear waters. For our final destination, we're going to visit my favorite Greek island, Zakynthos. I've, I've seen been this. here twice so far, and I just keep wanting to come back. It's one of the most impressive locations I've ever been. From thousand foot white cliffs to the bluest water Who's you've the... ever seen, Zakynthos has it all. The most famous place in Zakynthos is the Shipwreck Beach. I forget. Back in the 1980s, a cargo 
cargo ship from Turkey was carrying illegal contraband and the Greece Navy chased them into this cove where it crashed. Over the years, the sand has built up around the ship and it's created one of the most visually stunning locations in the world. The beach is only accessible by boat, so I got on one and headed to the beach. I was just baffled by the size of the cliff walls. They're over a thousand feet high. After checking out the beach, I decided to get a view from the cliffs above. I just had a good time exploring the cliff. Stop it. There's no other sight like it. I waited to see the sunset and the view was just as impressive. I was amazed how the ocean water turned into this milky blue color while the setting sun turned the cliffs to an orange hue. Ryan, get your feet away from the edge. It'll be a I sunset I'll remember for the rest of my life. One of my favorite things I did on Zakynthos was rent a boat. Me and my buddy George got one and hey, headed George. off to explore Zakynthos coast. We first went to this little island called Marathonisi. It's a beautiful little island and there's a nice beach you can dock on. After we headed over to this cove on Zakynthos and were surrounded by these gigantic cliffs, we got here later in the day and we pretty much had the whole cove to ourselves. We threw in our anchor and just had a wonderful evening jumping off the boat and enjoying one of the many wonders of Zakynthos. I just freaking love this island. Well, that is it for my Greek islands top 10. There's still hundreds of islands I left out, so I hope to return soon to make more videos. Of top 10. There's still hundreds. How? Oh, it has a. I was so. I was like, how is it moving that fast? There are no sails. Hundreds of islands I left out. Or they're down, but it's going to have a motor. So I hope to return soon to make more videos on them. Let me know where your favorite Greek island is in the comments below. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok at Shirley.Films. Awesome. It's Michelle. Ryan, and we will see you later. Thanks, Ryan. Um, this is the one, only one in the video where I've seen in another one of his videos. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, so my question about the sediment around Greece. I'm assuming a lot of the strange coloration has to do with the the historical volcanic activity around the area. I'm assuming that's what the answer is. We'd love to for you guys to let me know. Love y'all. Appreciate it. Anyone from Greece, hello. Uh, anyone from anywhere, we'd love to see your comments. Uh, we'd love for you to like and subscribe if you enjoyed watching this with me. It's completely free. And hopefully I'll see you guys next time. Bye.